The CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... of reckoning and retribution. At her hand, those who committed murder would suffer by the very destruction they had set into motion. At her hand, a killer was paid in his own coin, a crime that devised its own punishment. Is this the end of this extraordinary tale by Mr. Henry James that you're about to hear? A tale of nemesis. Madame, you have lived a protected life. <laughs> you have no idea of what goes on here at the waterfront. Are you a not anymore. I have better ways of making a living. What does he mean? I may have an undertaking for a strong man with no conscience. Will it uh, stay well? Very well. Uh, come to the docks any time, day or night, and just ask for a meal. This old meal. They will find me. drama, A Tragedy of Terror, by Mr. Henry James, was adapted especially for the Mystery Theater by G. Frederick Lewis, and stars Tammy Grimes. It is sponsored in part by ARM, Allergy Relief Medicine. I'll be back shortly with Act One. As Henry James unfolds this classic tale of mystery, he tells of four lives inexplicably intertwined. Three men and one woman. Within 24 hours, one of them would be dead. The next day, another. And then... But let us follow the story as it unfolds. And let the woman herself, Hortense Bernier, tell us how it all happened. I had tried to forget my husband's shop. I even had a gravestone put up with his name on it to help me believe I would never see him again. Why? Five years ago, he had been the manager of the Bank de France. One day, the auditors discovered he had been in Belgium. So without a word, Charles went to America. Left him, ran away, escaped. Call it what you will. To me, yes, Charles is dead. And you can imagine my feelings today, five years later, seeing his familiar handwriting on that envelope. Hotel? Hotel? Well, my dear, we've come here to the post office in our carriage. You asked me to go inside and fetch a letter addressed to you. Now you take it and stare at it as though it had been sent from the moon. This letter. It comes from me. Truly, you must open it. It's not from another world. Perhaps not. But from another lifetime. I shan't dwell on it, dearest. I'm sure you will open it when you've a mind to. Can you go straight home now, Lucy? Please. Oh, certainly not, but uh, Coachman, proceed to Madame Bernier's house. I wish you wouldn't do that. What? Oh, no, not again. Your aversion to my walking stick. I use it merely to gain his attention. I'm sorry, Louis, but a cane, a walking stick, it makes me cringe. I know, my dear, you've told me often enough. Coachman, allons. Will you read it, Louis? What? The letter you just brought me. Open it and read it out loud, please. I cannot... Certainly, Hortense. Let me see. Ah, it is marked South Hampton, July 16th, 1850. My dear Hortense, you will see by my postmark I am a thousand leagues nearer France than when I last wrote. What is it, my dear? I keep it right. But I threw the letter away. I couldn't bear to read it. Really? Um, I continue. After so many years of separation, the thought of seeing you again fills me with longing. I may have to hide for a bit, perhaps even take another name, until I am sure I can show my face to the world. I have some business to attend to here in Southampton, but I shall be on the Armoire East, arriving at Cherbourg on Friday. I have been a month on the seas from America. Yes, Mrs. Friday. Mrs. Friday. It does. Tomorrow. Good Lord, Welcome him, I expect. 
It is not often given to a woman to welcome her husband after five years absence. What am I to do about you, Andy? Well, I know it is ridiculous to ask, but I shall ask it anyway. Do you still love your husband? Of course not. <laughs> then what problem is there? Because Charles doesn't know about us. Well, no more than we know what life he's been living for the past five years in America. It was cowardly for him to run away as he did, leaving you to pay off his criminal debts. I had no choice. A man in a position of trust in Bessels, half a million francs, runs off to America to escape imprisonment, leaving you here alone without a word? Hm. You did have a choice. Wash your hands, of him. But no, you, Hortense Beignet, sold your jewels, your property, everything but this tiny country house in Cherbourg to pay back the bank what he had stolen. Not at all, Pam. It is the present that starts feeling to my heart. Hortense, do not be afraid. Surely you know my devotion to you by now. Oh, thank you, Mr. What better way to spend my inheritance but on the woman I love? I look at this dear watch you gave me. And this lovely case of pearls. And even this frightening thing. The chicken of the minute. My love, you must be calm. Your husband says he must hide. But he won't dare show his face. Shaw will leave Cherbourg sooner than you think. I can hear him now. Walking with that cane. That terrible limp of his. How I hate the sound of it. My darling, how I wish you could take it all a little more philosophically. I never told you, did I? How he would quit me with that cane. He... He beat you. Oh, I said he was a coward, but I had no idea. Hortense, do you know what the right thing would be for me to do? The right thing? I should be the one to meet him at that boat. Tell him face to face, Charles Benier, you're a despicable coward. I love your wife. What are you going to do about it? You, you wouldn't. Oh, probably not. There are easier ways. Well, no matter. Tomorrow will come and we shall see what we shall see. I think you were away. And although it was dark, I had to go out by myself. I needed to be alone to breathe fresh air. To think. I went down to the cave of Sherbrooke, where the poor sailors and fishermen live, work. And tie up the boat. Hello, little boy. Where are you going with that jack? Does it contain wine? Is it something for your supper? Why don't you answer me? He doesn't speak to you, madame, because he has no tongue. Come here, you. Give me that jug. Uh, milk, is it? Who gave you this milk? That old harridan who lives next door, huh? I thank God not to put her nose in my business. So, you like to drink milk, do you? Do you know what a sailor does with milk, huh? I'll show you. <laughs> Come back here, you beggar! I'll give you the hiding of your life if I catch you! Why did you do that? Break the child's jug of milk. <laughs> I can do what I like with him, if I want, huh? I don't understand a man like you. Oh! I don't understand what a lady like you is doing walking down here where the poor make their home. I have my reasons. <laughs> And I have mine. Uh, that wretched boy is supposed to be a child of mine. Your son? You are a strange man. Mm -hmm. So are all of us who live by the water here. It is our way of life uh, that makes us strange. Fighting a sea for a net full of fish. Rowing your arms out of their sockets. Taking people out to the big boats in the harbor. Fighting the weather, the hot sun, the rain. <laughs> yes, it can make one peculiar... Are you saying that because the sea is cruel, it has made you cruel? I hate that boy. The curse of God is on him. What curse of God? Listen, that stupid oaf cannot talk and can hardly hear. No matter how hard I box his ears, God's curse is to be deaf and dumb. Your own son? Where's your heart? Madame, I can see you have lived a very protected life. Believe me, lady, pity has no place on the waterfront. Are you still at all? A fisherman? Not anymore. <laughs> I, I have better ways of making a living. What is your name? Uh, why do you ask? I may have an undertaking for you to do. Oh, uh, will it pay well? Very well. <laughs> then I care not what it is. Uh, come down to these docks any time of the day or night and... Uh, Ask anyone for ill. Just 
Well, you could work on such a boat and get yourself a free package. Uh, you have it all planned, don't you? Uh, I have been to America already. You've been there. Huh? To Brazil, to Mexico, California, and the West Indies, and Asia, too. And China, and India. Life at sea is a dog's life. How so? Mm. The things I have seen, uh, the, the mean tricks. Uh, uh, we are nearing the cemetery point. You wish me to tie up the boat and wait for you, huh? Yes, please. We have seen mean tricks. Not played any of that? Uh, I gave what I got. I, I carried my knife with the best of them. Not. It opened. I drew it just as quickly and plunged it just as deep. Let me see your knife. Here. A beauty, isn't she? Huh? And I have the scars. <laughs> if you want a lady, I'll show you. On the other hand... You would find quite a few marks of my knife on a good dozen Spanish hides. I gave as good as I got. Is it? it? Are we here? Uh, the loading dock of the cemetery. Yes, madame. I shall wait for you. Thank you. <laughs> we were talking about that. And there it lies in front of us. I found my way to a family gravestone and stood beside it. It said Charles Beignet and then the date. Five years ago when I returned to my little house in Sherbrooke alone, I had the same need because I wished that Charles lay under it. Why have you come for Charles? I will not be able to bear the sound of the tapping of your cane. Ah! Madame, what is it? Nothing. My lady. Nothing. My lady. A graveyard at night is no place for the living, I... I think we should go back. Oh, wait. It is only I thought I saw something. Someone. But it's not. Uh, I, I can't say I like it here. Huh? Are you afraid of me? To sit with me on the grave? Mm, no, I, I'm not frightened. You have never put a man out of the world, then? Oh, oh yes. Are you horrified? In Spain, yes, but uh, not here in France. In South America, in those countries. When a man makes life insupportable, what do you do? Oh, my dear. I suppose you kill him. You kill him. Madame, did you say a hundred francs? It could be much, much more. Tell me, Henry. You find it hard to get along in the world. I can help you. What can you do? I will trust you and will reward you. Madame has a piece of work for me. Are you a bold man? Bold enough. To commit a crime. Do you, you wish this was over? Do you know the steamship Amorique will arrive tomorrow morning early from Southampton? I have rode out to her many times to bring my passengers. I, I know all the officers. What time will it be in the harbor? The tide will not be high enough for her to cross the bar and come in till noon. I expect the arrival of a person, a man. He is the, the person. The person whom you wish to get rid of. <laughs> it, it, it is just an owl. Uh, madame, do you have a plan? The person in question will be impatient to, to land it on me. If he can get a boat, he will be sure to come ashore right away. You mean my boat? Madame, don't cry. Don't cry. We will come to an understanding. You, you want me to finish him on the boat? Uh, he's an old man. No. My age. Yes. I appreciate oh, That is not so easy. He could have said he's lame. Oh, never mind. A lame man. Good. It will help me to let me know which passenger he is. Taking me back to the case. May we first discuss the business aspects? Yes. Uh, how am I to be sure of... Uh, of... of your reward? Look, I'm saying things watch. It is a pleasure for what I should give you afterwards. 
There are 2,000 francs worth of pearls in the case. Uh, no, I cannot take it. Uh, we must fix the amount you will pay me. You must tell me, yes. Uh, it will be a great deal of money. You are asking of me murder. Tell me how much. No, no, I, I leave it to you. I will accept whatever you propose. Yes, it's not my trade. No, man. 25,000 francs? Agreed. One thing more, my lady. Your name. Madame Hortense Benier. When I returned home, I found a letter under my door. It was from Louis. It said, I know what I must do. It is honorable. It is inevitable. Did he mean he would go aboard the Amorite to face up the child as he had threatened? Oh, no, not Louis. He was jesting. Besides, I know him. He will be sleeping late in the morning, as he always does. It was not until days later that I pieced together what must have happened. Oh, uh, officer, uh, may I have a word with you? Certainly, sir. What may I do? In my card, I am Louis de Marot. I've just been brought to the Amorique from the case. Is there a uh, Monsieur Charles Beignet on board? Beignet? Ah, uh, yes. Yes, good, good. I, I wonder if you could direct me where I might find him. Oh, I think he has already gone ashore, monsieur. There was a boatman inquiring after him a few moments ago. I think he carried him off. Too late. Mm, and my boat has gone back already. Oh, I shouldn't worry, sir. There will be other boats arriving from shore. And many of our passengers don't like to be so clearly in sight of land and have to wait until the Amoy crosses the bar in the afternoon. Looking down at the water from the deck here, I see a boat moored to the ladder on the stern. Is is that a town boat? Uh, yes, it is. Mm. Uh, do you know where the boatman is? Oh, he'll be along. Why don't you let yourself down this ladder and wait in the boat for him? Splendid. I wonder if you could do me a favor, monsieur. I have a portmanteau which I should like to have taken ashore this morning. Uh, could you take it with you and give it to the harbor master? Mm, why not? At least my trip here this morning will not have been entirely useless. I do appreciate it. Uh, you let yourself down the ladder, and I lower the portmanteau to you by rope. All right, officer, send it down. Here it comes, sir. Oh, uh, I believe I left my walking stick on the deck. Would you send that along also? I'll give it to the boatman here. You'll bring it down. Got the portmanteau? Uh, yes, yes, it made a safe landing. I'll, uh, I'll untie it. Good morning, sir. Glad to see you. Here is your cane. Oh, I, I was going to ask you if this was your boat. I can see it is. Yes, sir. At your service. Uh, officer, pull out the rope, huh? Uh, can you row me ashore? Uh, oh, where to? Uh, to Madame Bagnier's at the end of the quay. Certainly, sir. You're just the gentleman... I won. Eight o'clock in the morning. Nine o'clock. Ten. Anxiously, I waited. Would there be a noise? Would I hear a struggle out there in the harbor? Would somebody see? It was broad daylight. I couldn't stop myself from shivering. And then, I saw a figure walking up from the new place. He waved something. It was a man. He came closer. Arthur, Arthur, is it you? He waved again, but a cane hand, a cane. The man moved close, limping. Arthur. What did we say about Nemesis? In ancient Rome, the Romans worshipped this divine entity, the goddess who disapproved of defeat. The goddess that decreed a hand raised against another will be struck with its own punishment. The man Hortense tried to have murdered was here at her gate alive. Who had died in this place? How? It was too terrifying for her to think. Our story will continue shortly. great and prolific author Henry James. By the time he was 45, he'd already written 10 novels and half a hundred short stories. This story about Hortense Bernier, her lover, her husband, and her fate, was James' very first story, written when he was 21. 
as unforgettable as his last. Now, to our reunited couple, Charles and Hortense. I can't remember that it often gets so chilly on a July night. <laughs> I'm glad you need the fire, Hortense. I felt very cold myself, Charles. It must be nine o'clock, my dear. Ah, the familiar rest sounds of France. I miss them. I love them. You must be tired, Charles, after that long sea journey. Five years. It's hard to believe that. Five long years. I must say, my dear, you have not aged one minute. In fact, you are lovelier than I remember you. What say you? Do you answer for my dear wife? I thought you don't receive compliments like that every day. I seem much, much older than the morning long ago when I awoke and you were gone. Ah, my dear child, you're not going to bring up the past again, are you? Are you? Oh, Charles, there is no use in pretending. Pretending? What are you talking about? It doesn't matter. Right you are. What matters is the peace, the comforts of home, and another glass of cognac. And we might came with you, my dear. Uh, I'm very fond of the cognac you have provided. In America, they don't know what you're talking about. Charles, it has been a long day for me. If you'll excuse me, I would like to retire. Ah, huh? retire? Without me? But I haven't finished my glass. I've made it a bed for you in a little room off the library. You have put me into a separate bed? My dear, you're joking. Let us understand one another. I may be your wife in the sight of the law, but that is all. In the sight of God also. Come now, I am your husband. And as such, I have right. Charles, please, do not be difficult. You're choosing to go to bed with me. Charles, please. Cognac is frightful. It is not the only thing I shall break if I find a bad taste in my mouth. My dear, in the past, if I remember, when you were, shall we say, obstinate, I was obliged, if you remember, to admonish you with my cane. Charles, no, no, Charles. Uh, why are you backing away from me? Put it down, please. Put the cane down. Hortense, come here. Hortense, I order you to send cane. No, no, Charles, I beg you. My dear, I shall break every stick of furniture in this room. Stand still. For heaven's sake, Charles, have mercy. Uh, uh, your favorite vase. Uh, your portion. Uh, Everything that gets in my way between you. Me, uh, talk. I can't uh, Stop. Stop, please. All right. All right. Uh, uh. Ah, there. Now you're being sensible. Uh, uh, come here. Uh, now that's right. Uh, Another step. Uh, Two more. Uh, ah, you're face to face. Uh, ah. How exquisite your hair looks in the firelight. There, you see. I can be gentle. To show you that I trust you, I shall throw down my cane. Ah, you see. Here we are, husband and wife, standing beside the warm fire. I shall put my arms about you. Ah. Mm. Now you kiss me. Yes. Oh, your sweet softness. Oh, yes. 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 I'm falling. Oh, my head. I'm bleeding. Blood on my eyes. Yes. I can see. Help me. Help me up. My foot is doubled up under me. Help me. Help me. Oh, my head. Everything is swinging my head. I pushed him from me and he had fallen in front of the fire. I couldn't bear to stay in his sight in another moment. I ran upstairs and got my cloak. Of oh, course! Help me! I put my hands over my ears and shut my mind the sight of all that blood and the stone house. Somehow I ran from the house. And the next thing I knew I was inside the tool shed, shutting the door behind me. Oh, all night I sat there, in terror. In the morning, as though in a nightmare. I found myself walking towards the cave 
Oh, I could hear cries on the bed. What were they looking at? Move along there. There's nothing for you to see. Your near body has been washed ashore. Oh, madame, I would not look over there if I were you. <gasps> I told you, madame, not to look. A drowned man is not a pretty sight. It was me. I stood rooted at the spot. I could not move. You were drowned. I felt numb and dead. All was so hopeless. What was the use to go on living? What for? I felt someone's hand on my shoulder. Madame Bernier. What? Lean on me. I will help you. Please. I'm so sorry. Uh-huh. Don't you know me? No, you. I'm, I'm sorry about that. Uh, 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 perhaps a bit of brandy will help. Huh? I, I have some at my place. Brandy? But it is morning. I, I live not far from here. I put my hand here under your arm and we, and we walk. Huh? So. Uh, now, one step at a time, madame. Uh, here we are. This is my door. I shall open it. Uh, now, you sit yourself in that chair. It's my best and only chair. Madame Bernier. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, well, I should think so. <laughs> we have done a little bit of business together. Have we not? Oh, yes. You rode me to the cemetery. Ah, I knew you would remember. <laughs> <laughs> the grave. Charlie's grave. He isn't dead at all. <clears throat> he is not in that grave. Not dead. Oh, oh yes, he is. Oh, oh yes, he is. Uh, and now, my lady, to your word. <laughs> 25,000 francs. I kept my part of the bargain. Now you must keep yours. <laughs> you killed the wrong man. Huh? What do you mean? That man, that, that body on the beach, he is not Charles. He did not do Charles. Oh, no. Charles is dead. It was I who have killed him. Uh, Madame Bernier. It is you who should pay me. I left him to bleed to death in my house. I warn you, this is no time to play tricks on an old wise sailor. As we agreed, I rode out to the steamship and I brought back the man you described. A man of my age with a portmanteau. A traveler. A man with a cane. The right man. I tell you, no. No, no, no. No, no. You killed the wrong man. I'm going. I wouldn't leave if I were you. Not until you acknowledge your part of the bargain. Your face. Mm, my lady is too pretty for the blade of my knife. The knife. Not so close to my... No. So, would you care to feel a sharpness, eh? I barely touch your neck. Oh, and it leaves a red mark, huh? 25,000 francs. Oh, I shall give you all day, Madame Bernier. And when the sun is setting, I shall expect to find you in my boat. Your handbag filled with francs. What could she do? Where could I die? It is not the mind that is in my house. But I didn't dare go and fetch Charles was there. I was dead or dying in front of the fireplace. What was that to me? I couldn't run away or hide or start my life again. And when it came to me, I'd be frightened. I had nothing left in me for. I would keep the only beard in me and pray he would cut my throat. But he would be pleased and end the misery of an unbearable life. At that, I sat in his robe. Miserable creature! Get away from me, child. I don't want you here. Go somewhere else, huh? He was beating that poor little dead and dumb child again. I could hear him. Get away from here. I'll break every bone in your body. Get away from my boat, boy. I don't want you in my boat. Here, quick, let the boy come here. Get behind me. Madame, I ask you to move aside. 
I am not going to teach that ugly child a lesson. He's done nothing to you. Stop in here. Put that oar down. I have told that child to leave me alone. To go live somewhere else. I have warned him again and again. <laughs> uh, let go of this oar, madame. I won't. Now you've made me drop it. You shan't have it. Give that back to me. One step closer to that child and I... And you'll... And you'll... <laughs> In that case, I'd wave it away. There's nothing more to see. Your father won't hurt you anymore. I knew I had killed him. We are staring up at me with the same eyes and a face that me washed up on the beach. I took the boy to the little hut on next door. The woman came out and folded him in her arms. The child would be safe. For me, there would be no safety. I went to the prefect of police. What did you say your name was, madame? My name? Uh, yes. Uh, yes. What thanks? I was named after my mother. I am married. Madame Hortense Benier. That's the name. Benier. Uh, madame Benier, I regret we have kept you waiting, but we have had another fatal accident on the case side. I have to take deposition. It was I who killed him. Are you all right, madame? It... Uh... It would require a person of great strength to lift one of those oars. Twelve feet long, solid oak. I can barely lift one myself. I was the woman. It was I. But you are small and frail. How could it have been you? Furthermore, why did you feel it necessary to come here and make such a confession? Because it is so. Ah. Wait um, just a moment. I have an expensive pearl-studded watch which was found on the body. Is it by any chance your own? Yes, yes, it is my watch. So you see, I was with him. I was there, so I could have killed him. No, 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 not so fast, dear lady. On the face of it, yes, it could have been your watch. But the other? No. Jermaine Hines did assist with this so called admission of guilt, Madame de Mille, and you must also furnish me with a reason, a motive. It was because of the boy. The boy was being beaten. I know that. You know that? Naturally. Everyone on the waterfront knows how Emil tortured that child because he believed his wife had betrayed him. Common knowledge. Please. Please. I wanted him dead. There is nothing for me to live for. I have killed. You must punish me. Um, excuse me. Someone to see me. Ah, yes. Yes, I'm glad you came. Uh, Madame Benier is here. Oh, Oh, God. Yeah. I have come to take you home. And so the curtain falls on the third act of A Tragedy of Error. But has it fallen for the last time on Hortense Bernier? Is it the end of her story? We rather think it is only the beginning. A lifetime of marriage to a man she hates. Caught like a fly in the web of a spider. Nemesis. I shall be back shortly. Putting it simply, an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth, blow for blow, cat and mouse, the hunter and the hunted, vengeance and revenge. These are some of the themes on which Henry James built a career of extraordinary fiction. Although more than a hundred years separate his generation from ours, what you have just heard was the very beginning of the modern psychological novel. Our cast included Tammy Grimes, Robert Dryden, Fred Gwynn, and Russell Horton. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. And now, a preview of our next who are you, anyway, huh? Well, I'm just Elma Potts, like I told you. But I've been delegated, and that means you have to go. Delegated by whom? Well, directly only by my controller, but he acts on orders of the supervisor, uh, the man himself. But that isn't the way it works. It's, 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 it's death that comes to take people away. Well, that's what I thought, too, before I made my crossing. But, well, you can see now, like I can see, that that was only in olden times. 
there, there are too many people kicking off now for one person to handle the whole thing, so that's just like one of the dirty jobs you get handed when you're new over there. Jobs? Sure. Now, come on. We've we, we got to get a move on. And I, I am not going with you. You've got to go with me. You're dead. Mrs. E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next.